and welcome you all to sail to MDS Dental Academy. I hope you all are doing fine and working towards your goal. So there is a small message for my MDS student friends that dig your own doubts. That for example, when you are studying certain MCQ or topic, you have any doubts, don't be the passive in that. Just uh, type in the Google and get the answer. Uh, no, you go to the standard reference book, read it properly and have your concept clear. This will help you during your examination. Because if you be the passive performer in your study, you can easily answer direct question. But you know, out of 100%, 10 to 15% questions are direct. But other 85% questions are always indirect and twisted. So please dig your own doubts from standard reference textbooks and study properly. So that will help you during your examination. And I want to thank you or thanks all of you that my previous video and on tick emergencies during the treatment was liked by everybody. If uh, anybody have not watched, you can watch by clicking on the i button given above. So today we will discuss with the endodontic emergencies during the treatment. And friends, if any MDS aspirants have any doubt or even any clinical doubts you have, you can WhatsApp me, you can mail me. The information is given on the description box and also you can comment that our doubts will be solved and I will get back to you as soon as possible. So friends, let's get started with the today's topic. So hello friends, so now today we will study about the endodontic emergencies during the treatment. To watch the video on the endodontic emergencies before the treatment, you can click on the i button above. So the topics for today video will be hot tooth and endodontic flare -ups. So what is hot tooth? A tooth that is difficult to anesthetize that is hot tooth. Most commonly we encounter during the treatment of mandibular molars. So often we have seen that we give the inferior nerve block to the patient. The patient have a soft tissue, numbness, but when we go for the excess opening, the patient will feel acute pain. So what is that? That is hot tooth. So why such thing occur? So we know there are two types of fibers, A delta fibers and a C fibers, which are responsible for the pain. In our endodontics, C fibers are responsible to sensitize the nerve endings. On these C fibers, there are a special class of sodium channels known as TTX, that is a tetrodotoxin resistant fibers. So in case of inflammation, the TTX sensitive fibers will change to the TTX resistance fibers. These fibers are almost five times more resistant to anesthetize. So because of that, the hot tooth occurs. So how you will manage such hot tooth? You can use the bibuvacaine. The study has shown that the bibuvacaine is a more potent and effective on these TTX channels. And other thing, you can go for your supplementary injection technique like a intraligamentary or a intraosteous technique. Then the second most important thing is endodontic flare-ups. Almost out of 10, 6 to 7 cases we see that endodontic flare-up occurs. The patient says that okay, before treatment there was no pain but so doctor when you start the treatment, I am feeling some pain. Or after they go for the excess opening, uh, biomedical preparation, they feel certain kind of pain. So what is that? So endodontic flare-up is an acute exaggeration of your asymptomatic pulp or any periapical pathosis after the initiation or continuation of your endodontic therapy. The studies have shown that the inter appointment flare-up incidence around 1.4 to 19 percent. Sometimes this flare-up forms a true emergency which requires a patient unscheduled visit and immediate treatment for a relief. So what are the predisposing factors or you can say the contributing factors for this endodontic emergencies. As we know, we go for the biomechanical preparation. So what is the biomechanical preparation? It is shaping and cleaning the canals. We shape the canals to properly clean it. So my MDS aspirants noted down, they ask in examination, what is BMP? It is shaping and cleaning. It is not a cleaning and shaping. 
so there can be the shaping errors like over instrumentation under instrumentation defect in your shaping techniques or cleaning errors like your irrigant extrusion others we can say anxious patient or any pre operative history of a pain or a swelling retreatment cases and also the contributory medical history of a patient so now we'll focus on shaping errors there are mostly three shaping errors over instrumentation under instrumentation and your defect in shaping technique so first is over instrumentation the over instrumentation is a operator induced error so what happen when you over instrument your anodding instrument beyond the apical foramina it results in intraoperative or post operative pain why because because of over instrumentation your debris will force into the peri radicular area which causes acute inflammatory response and that results in pain so how can you avoid over instrumentation you can avoid over instrumentation by follow proper working line and if it occurs what you have to do you can continue your therapy but along with that you have to administer proper analgesic to the patient to relieve pain and along with that occlusion reduction is necessary then how you will know that your instrument is over you can grasp the paper point 2 mm more than the working length then the paper point will easily pass without any hindrance and on withdrawal there will be the reddish discoloration of the tip of your paper point which indicate inflamed tissue and absence of stop in your apical preparation second is under instrumentation what happen when you under instrument your uh, canal because of that the pulpal remnants will left in the canal so this this pulpal remnants act as a needles for a source of infection they will produce virulence factors which will convert your asymptomatic pulp into the symptomatic pulp and that results in the mild and uh, uh, mild endodontic flare ups so what you can do at the time go for the proper debridement of your root canal space remove your entire pulp with the help of brooches and edge file and use proper irrigants you know there is a one concept along with the biomechanical preparation there is a concept known as a chemo mechanical preparation the nowadays that is only followed the biomechanical preparation is obsolete instead of that we use a chemo mechanical preparation because we are using certain chemicals also and along with that we are preparing with the help of some instrumentation so that is chemo mechanical preparation then shaping techniques most of us use rotary instruments but so because of that there are less chances that the, there will be the extrusion of debris in the periapical area because conventional hand instrument was shown to extrude the more debris so what happened the debris contain a pulpal remnants necrotic tissue dentinal fillings canal irrigants microorganisms and the toxins which causes inflammation in the periradicular space so what you can do which is the best shaving technique to follow you can follow crown down technique or a balanced force technique you can see in the diagram what happened when you go for the proper shaving technique how the balance is maintained but because of improper shaving technique how the imbalance occur between your periapical area and your pulpal space now we focus on the cleaning errors mostly the standard regimen we follow is a 0.1 to 5.2% sodium hypochlorite along with that 17% edta but what happen when your uh, irrigants extrude beyond the periapex most often it is seen commonly with the hypochlorite followed by your uh, uh, chlorhexidine so if your hypochlorite get extrude beyond the periapex it will cause a immediate pain to the patient you can form the swelling uh, of the associated area and along with that you can see the sudden flooding of your canal with a blood and fluids so why your canal get uh, when hypochlorite accident uh, occur why your canal get flood with the blood and the fluids you know the hypochlorite is a hypertonic so when that hypertonic solution go in the periapical area it will open up small cap uh, capillaries so that from that capillaries the blood will flow in the canal it is a physiological reaction of the body in order to dilute your 
hypochlorite and even on the face you can see the ecchymosis and edema so what are the causes so the most common cause is a forceful injection of your hypochlorite due to wedging of the irrigating needle into the root canal second you have to be very cautious when you use uh, when, when you treat the patient having a apical resorption or immature apexis there or they have a large apical foramina in such cases you have to use the modified technique of a hypochlorite so if it occurs how you will manage it first of all you have to go for the immediate aspiration second apply tell the patient go for the application of the cold pack over the affected area then you have to go for the regional block anesthesia in order to relieve the pain then if the canal is flooding with the blood and fluids allow it to get flood this is a physiological reaction afterwards irrigate your canal with saline saline is a isotonic so what that will do it will remove all your bloods and that will decrease the pain in the patient you know hypochlorite will not only uh, remove the Uh, debris or the necrotic tissue but it will also affect your normal tissue so normal endodontist advise that whenever hypochlorite uh, injection occur the parenteral administration of the analgesic and the antibiotic is needed in some cases we have to consult the general physician or medicine people to give a steroid to the patient and along with that sometime the supplemental vitamins is also required so how could you prevent this hypochlorite injection use recommended needle use 30 gauge side vented closed ended needle and whenever you are inserting your needle note it down that in posterior teeth it should be 3 mm short of your working length and in anterior teeth it should be 1 mm short of your working length then bend the irrigating needle at center to confine the tip of the needle to higher or coronal levels of root canal second never bind the needle in the canal oscillate the needle in and out to make sure that your teeth is free to express irrigant without any resistance and third express the irrigant slowly and gently if you respect the uh, proper physiology anatomy automatically they will also respect you so there are also other factors like anxiety uh, the study has been done on the basis of cora anxiety scale and a facial image pain, uh, pain scale that if a patient is anxious and they think that they will have a pain during the endodontic treatment there are equal chance that they will perceive pain even after the treatment one more point is pre operative history of pain and swelling so there is a proper correlation that if there is a pre operative history of pain and swelling there are equal chance that endodontic flare up will occur then third is a re treatment cases what happened in re treatment cases when you remove the gutta percha or any um, gutta uh, percha or uh, sealers uh, there are chances that your debris will extrude beyond the apical foramina and also the microbiota there is also resistant to the treatment so in re treatment cases there are chances that you may end up to the endodontic flare up then most important medical status of patient often we neglect the medical status of patient okay we relate the medical status with the local uh, uh, anesthetics uh, or with the patient medication but we never relate the medical status with the patient pulpal space so what happen if diabetic patient is there there are more chances of flare up because of increased sugar content so please before starting treatment have the patient for controlled diabetes and give proper antibiotics then hypertensive uh, patient care should be taken you know during uh, giving local anesthesia and epinephrine is a contraindicated then pregnant patient the second trimester is the best time to treat first and third pose the risk to the fetus and patient and if it needed only emergency treatment should be done and remain treatment can be continued after pregnancy so how could you treat and prevent this flare up go for the occlusal reduction proper antibiotic prophylaxis in needed case then you can go for the incision and drainage so you can go for the uh, open or you can allow the tooth uh, for a complete drainage not more than 20 minute followed by complete removal of pulp tissue and debris and closed dressing the concept of open dressing has been completely obsolete 
because if you keep the open dressing there are chances that the oral microflora and the salivary contamination can occur and that will decrease the chances of success of your treatment so always go for the closed dressing fourth is a calcium hydroxide therapy so you can go for the intracanal medicament of calcium hydroxide the best intracanal medicament is a triple antibiotic paste followed by your ladder mix paste and then the calcium hydroxide then proper antibiotics and analgesic should be given and in certain cases you have to give a corticosteroids so now in nutshell i will explain once again that how the endodontic flare ups occur so because of microbial infection and periapical inflammation two things uh, can occur one is the progression of disease and second is the local adaptation response that your body will adapt it the patient will be in the asymptomatic phase so when you initiate the root canal therapy what happen there will be the introduction of irritants irritants in the form of microbial by products your irrigants medicament alter tissue proteins and that causes acute inflammatory response in your periapical space and that result in the endodontic flares so okay friends so this was all about the endodontic emergencies during the treatment fine